In this video, I'm going to summarize every single quest that happens in Howling Fjord. Now, this is a continuation episode, so if you missed the last one, then go ahead and click this link right over here. But if you're all caught up, then let's go ahead and jump in and find out what's going on in World of Warcraft. After dealing with the nymph situation, you head north a bit to use the horn. And just to refresh you on that quest, you were here to test it to see if it can make the mating call of the female yeti, so that Nakoma would be prepared when she takes part of the hunt. So you head to the waterfall and you use the horn to attract one of the yetis to come, which it does happen. And once you defend yourself against that yeti, you make your way back to Camp Winterhoof. And first, you speak with Nokoma Snowseer. You tell her that the horn worked pretty well, and that the yeti that you summoned ended up speaking to you. Well, this disturbs Nokoma, and now she really doesn't know if she can go along with the hunt, saying that she'll have to speak to Chieftain Ash Totem about it. Now you speak with Long Runner Pemby, and he asks if you recover the book at Giant's Run which you did, and he scans it over and he realizes that it doesn't have much familiarity with the Iron Dwarves and their language, but he thinks that the ruins that they've carved into the giants is derived from their spoken language, which I really don't see how that makes any sense, but that's what the quest says. Pemby says that the runes aren't just symbols, but that they have the power to bind, compel, and twist. And he says that he could mimic the runes in the book, but he needs the tools in order to do so. Now these tools can be located in certain boxes back at Giant's Run. So you need to collect a full set of iron rune carving tools and bring them back to him. Now you run up to Sage Eden and tell him about the ruins you found regarding the north and west appearing over and over and over, which he thinks that the repetition of these directions suggest a strong command of some sort. So he wants to know what's luring the giants to the northwest, and says that when he was at Giant's Run, he noticed a large broken tablet sticking out of the ground, which he also calls the Lodestone. What Sage Eden wants you to do now is take the rune sample that you collected and compare it with the tablet. Hopefully you can learn more about the Lodestone that way. Now you run up to Chieftain Ash Totem, and he says that the Vrykul at their fortress named Scorn are planning an attack on the Tonka here at Camp Winterhoof. But everyone here is planning to head north to less dangerous areas. So he wants you to buy them some time by repelling the Vrykul forces. Now Ash Totem sent one of his own to Scorn, and he hands you this emblem and tells you to show it to his scout, or he calls it a brave. And when you do, this brave will come out and help you in any way that he can. Before we continue, I just want to mention that if you're enjoying this content, then make sure to hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications, and also give it a thumbs up because it really does help in the long run. Also, if you're looking to get deeper in this community, I stream here on YouTube every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, usually during the day. It's a fun time. I not only just play World of Warcraft, but I also take the time to gather all this footage so you get a little bit of a behind the scenes of how these videos are made. And lastly, if you really want to support the channel, then consider joining up with the membership. We call it the Order of Lore Masters, and you get your own personal grimoire, and it levels up as long as you stay within the membership subscription. If you have any questions about that, then go ahead and check out the link down below. I am opening up more perks as more members join up. And don't forget to check out the social media, especially the Discord channel. Okay, let's get back to the video. Now you leave Camp Winterhoof and travel to the far east in search for the Lodestone. When you find it, you compare the rune sample with the tablet sticking out of the ground. This presents uh, a sort of vision to you, as you see multiple giants led by one named Megalith. And he says that they have a mission from the Iron Masters, saying that they must travel into the mountains in order to fulfill it. Now you make your way into Giant's Run, and find the box containing the rune tools. From here you travel all the way to the west and show up at the village of Scorn. Once there, you use the emblem and summon the Winter Hoof Brave, and he asks if you're ready to proceed. This is when he presents three quests for you to do. The Elder said that these Vrykul may be able to rise from the dead, but not like the Scourge. It's a different kind of undeath. Anyways, the Brave wants you to take this machete that he gives you and carve up the remains of 20 Vrykul that you both slay as you move through the village. Chieftain Ash Totem also wants you to burn down the buildings here, and the Brave suggests that you take out the two longhouses and the barracks located in the lower area of the village. Lastly, you need to take out the towers, but the casters at the top will most likely kill you if you get too close, so the best solution is to lob a smoke flare on top of them, which will call the Wind Riders from Camp Winterhoof to come over and provide an airstrike. Now you head into the village, and kill the Vrykul along with chopping up their bodies. While doing that, you find a scroll made of dragon skin, 
But when you read it, it has pictures of a very cool thing. Surrounded by like angelic looking beings and he's being ascended into the heavens. While there's some sort of dark figure in the background. Something tells you that this event is actually going to happen and you need to stop it. You don't really know why it's a big threat, but it just feels bad. So in order to stop this, present the scroll at the Thane's Pyre, which will call him out and you can handle the situation from there. Now you continue and take out the towers by calling the airstrikes on him. Summon the Thane at the Pyre and kill him, which results in his failure to ascend. And burn down the buildings that the Brave suggest to you earlier. Once that's all done, you return and report to the Brave. He takes the machete back from you and looks a bit worried because he kind of thinks you've done something like this before. Nods at your handling of torching the buildings and says that they really should feel the heat of the land now. Lastly, he's pleased that the Wind Riders were used today by taking out the towers instead of drinking all day. The Brave says that you fought well and suggests that you report to Chieftain Ashtotem about everything that went down over here. So you head back to Camp Winterhoof, and when you arrive, you speak with the Chieftain. He says that with everything you've done at Scorn, you've given them more time to prepare for their departure. Now Chieftain Ashtotem says that his long runners are reporting that the Vrykul have awoken at their main fortress to the west, and they're performing some sort of ritual. Ashtotem wants you to kill them before they finish whatever they're doing and before they attack the people here at Camp Winterhoof. When speaking with Sage Eden about the lodestone that you found earlier, and seeing the vision of the giants moving north, he mentions that their leader named Megalith must be the centerpiece of the Iron One's mysterious plan. So now he wants you to kill Megalith, because if you do, then the giants won't have a leader anymore, which will inevitably weaken the Iron Dwarf's strength so that in the end they won't be able to stand against the Tonka. Now you run up to Long Runner Pemby and turn in the tools that you found at Giant's Run, which he says that they're a bit more delicate than he thought and wishes to try them out for a moment. Pemby is then able to make a ruin that will be able to control the Giants, omitting some of the ruins that could be counterproductive, which in the end he creates the Ruin of Command. Now with this ruin, you should be able to control one of the Giants at Giant's Run and use it to defeat Binder Murdis, who is the leader of of the Iron Dwarf forces. Now you leave Camp Winterhoof and make your way towards Megalith's location. Once you arrive at Frostblade Peak, you kill him, leaving the Giants leaderless. Then you make your way into Giants Run. Take control of one of the Giants by way of the Ruin of Command, and use it to defeat the Iron Dwarf leader, Binder Murdis. Once that's done, you leave the area and return to Camp Winterhoof. Upon arriving, you speak with Longrunner Pemby, who says that you did a great job in killing their leader, but he has no doubt that his people will meet the Iron Dwarves again when they make their way up north. Now you run up to Sage Eden, and he's worried about Megalith's final words, asking you if you're sure that he said Stoneforge, which he says that this name or this word isn't a word that's familiar to his people, but it sounds like something that might have to do with the creation of the Titans. In the end, Sage Eden says that we must watch these giants and look for the Stoneforge before they end up carrying out whatever plans they have. With this quest turned in, you complete the ninth chapter in the Howling Fjord storyline. We're really close to finishing off Howling Fjord and then we'll be moving on to Boring Tundra next. Once we get there, we'll switch over to the Alliance and see what's going on. But before we wrap things up, I just want to give a big shout out to the Order of Lore Masters. Your membership to this channel is a huge contribution and helps out so much with creating new content and introducing new things to kind of share with you guys and I'm really grateful for it. Again, if you'd like to join the membership, then go ahead and check out the link down below. And with that, I'll see you next week when we find out what you missed in the Tales of Azeroth.